Today we're going to talk about talkative students. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today, one of those talking head videos again. Uh, this one's on classroom management with students who talk too much in the classroom. So I got three tips to go over with you to give you guys a better classroom experience for you and the kids. So I've been working with new teachers for like the last 10 years. One of the constant things that gets brought up is what can I do about talkative students? This is going to be kind of a polarizing topic just because I've got three really good techniques that work really well for me. Uh, they also work for other teachers that I work with, but it might not work for your situation. So let's first off cover why that happens. One, know your population. Understand who these kids are, why they are the way they are, why they talk about the stuff that they talk about. What is up with them? Why are they this way? I understand how my students are in the class minors in the hallway when we're doing classroom changes, the interactions that I see, how they engage with other students, how they engage with staff. Seeing how that stuff ties together gives me better insight into how to engage with my students. The other end of the coin also is how did you set up your classroom? What overall arching things did you do to create the classroom that you have not the classroom that you want the classroom that you have one of the things that i try and instill into my teachers and into people that i work with in general consistency it is always comes down to consistency if you are on day one the same that you're on day 180 the end of the school year awesome but if you're flip-flopping back and forth every other couple months or a couple weeks or heaven forbid over a few days you're not going to have the interaction that you want because you didn't create some sort of stability across the board. The three tips that I've got them going over with you today, I've used in kindergarten through high school, but I've done the whole spectrum and all these worked for me. With that said, I have a very, very strong personality, which means that I get in the room and I control it in general just because of the way that I am. But there's some, there are some basic things that make life a lot easier. All right, so number one, the number one thing that I will recommend. So we've all heard or seen another teacher do the, if you hear my voice clap once if you hear my voice clap twice that iteration where call and then a call back i did one too but i wanted to make it more artistic so i did i said mona they said lisa and mona lisa mona lisa and i have a very bass tone when i do it i actually had to do it at a museum once it was weird but it worked but it's consistency so i did it from day one before i gave the students the seats in the classroom we went over it or it was maybe it was shortly thereafter regardless day one is when i started it on that first day i did it like six times in 45 minutes to an hour class that right there set up the precedent of this is what he expects every day and then throughout that first week every day i'm doing it several times that first week then after the first week i did it maybe two times a class because i would tell them what i needed to tell them and then they got their time to do their thing and then end of class cleanup time did it again it became a consistency thing and it wasn't hard to do it's not a lot of brain cells that you got to push out there because you got to think when when am i doing this and that made it a lot easier quick story the most eerie time that i ever, ever had to use it was in a pep rally where um i was going out with the camera and i was trying to get some shots of the students in the stands everybody cheering or, or have like a massive group photo of one of the groups i was sitting in front of the seventh graders because it was middle school so i had seventh grade on one side eighth grade was behind me and then sixth grade was kind of a, it was a weird kind of split thing i'm standing in front of the seventh grade and i'm trying to get all their attention at once and i've had most of these kids so i did the chant mona lisa mona lisa the whole gym went dead silent because i've had all these kids and ha seeing the looks on other teachers of i got the whole gym to be quiet in one thing and i'm only doing it to one group because i've instilled that with the entire school really threw the admin off their game that day all right moving on to number Two, my second best thing that I did to really curb talking was I controlled the conversation. Uh, like I said in the beginning, understand your, your group, understand your community. What do these kids think about? What do these kids talk about a lot? I am huge into pop culture. Notice the stuff behind me. We've got Sunnydale's thing here from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Jason's Camp Crystal Lake over here. There's a lot of things that I have in my room that are just generalized pop culture stuff. When a new Marvel movie comes out and I've either seen the trailer, I'm about to watch the trailer. I'll try and watch the trailer right before the kids come in who's gonna go see this movie because i need to talk about this i make a very clear blanket statement at the beginning if you know something that we don't know you cannot spoil it if you do i will deduct points from something and i say that just because look we're being serious here we we need to we need to have a good conversation and the respect that comes off of the kids of like oh he's going to talk about something we want to talk about give us some insight i want to be a part of that conversation i want to have that element in there your excitement over those topics 
carries over to the kids and then they engage with that. It's all that positive reinforcement because you create that positive environment to where you're talking about something in the class. And if you have something at a museum that you saw that was really cool or you saw something on Pinterest, because we all see something on Pinterest, add that stuff in there, tie it together with something that's related to them and then run that conversation. You'll learn something, they learn something, and it's overall, it stays on topic of whatever you're doing for the class. And it keeps a consistency of the majority of the group is talking about the same thing. So those stragglers who are off, usually don't talk because they're not in the realm and you and then you pull them in with other ways so you take notice of that but those things do happen you're controlling the conversation and lastly number three my best tip is we didn't talk let me explain that there was a time I was testing out I was just like I don't want to talk <laughs> for a few weeks and I didn't what I did is I made little cards and I kept them in my pocket and I pulled out little cards of things that I needed to say I refused to talk so I let the kids talk but I didn't talk I did a whole mute thing even when I was doing directions, I had stuff on the board and I mime it out. I had like a flashing light thing that I'd hold up if I needed somebody to get somebody's attention or I'd use my phone and I'd like flash it. I just had several cards. So like this was really once a project was started. So nothing new had to be discussed. We were in project mode and the kids were just coming in to do the work. I just had to go around and make sure if anybody had questions, what we could do to answer questions. So I had a series of things that I had written out. This looks good. This needs work on. I don't think this is working or or there was like an arrow one that was like a down thumbs or a double thumbs. That became a thing for a couple weeks after that because then the kids come in, they had cards. So no one's talking, it's dead silent. It's weird because I usually have music playing in the background, but you see these cards going back and forth and it's like seeing old men playing dominoes. So that's just going back and forth. You gotta keep it together and not let it just like, you can't crack up laughing because that kills whatever you set up, but it does create a very interesting environment. I've got a heavy personality. So the kids feed off of that personality. If that's the case, that might be an option for you. With all this said, I know that there's gonna be some people out there like, this will never work for me. I can never do something like this. This is just not gonna happen. That's fine. But let's go back to those basics. Do you know your community? Do you know those kids? Do you understand what they talk about, why they talk about, what they're interested in? Well, that's what we're trying to work on. We're working on building the culture, building the community that works to elevate your classroom, to elevate the learning process. Be aware of how these kids are treated in other classes during the school day, because that does carry over into your room. Even if you're the teacher who lets them get away with murder, over on the other end of the building, they can't, and they've just had nothing but people yelling down at them, talking down to them for hours, and then they finally come to you, and there's that level of breathe, and that's the place where they can breathe, and you have to take that into account. I've had several schools where 13, 14, 15 year old is expected to walk silently down the hallway to go to a class, not interact with their peers who they are not allowed to engage in any form or fashion during that time. So there's that level of these kids haven't had that outlet too, and they come to my class and I do allow them to have those interactions because it's the only time that they see those other kids. Sometimes it's creating a thing at the beginning where you have that talk time. I had the meme wall, uh, which I'm a big fan of, where we would have a funny wall up because transitions took, trans Transitions from class to class are supposed to be what, five to seven minutes? Mine were 20 to 30 minutes because the admin wouldn't let the students off the hall because they weren't walking single file in line, absolutely silent. It was a power struggle with a teenager and that's the fight that they wanted to have. I didn't agree with the fight. So the kids came in and I said, here's what you guys gotta get done. We're gonna start off with this. So you guys have that time frame during transition. Check out the funny memes that I've got. Some of them were horror themed, which was little mini scary stories that they could read. And that really was good for, for discussion Discussion. But they had that moment of we got five minutes, 10 minutes to to just breathe. That was a class of 37 boys and three girls. Yeah, 40 students in one class. That was a rough year. That's what they needed. They needed that engagement. They needed that level of breathability. And then to get the work out of that afterwards was fine. It wasn't hard after that because I took out the thing that was stressing them most and let them refocus on the work afterwards. And that worked. That worked for me. That's because I understood what was needed for the group. Might not work for you. You might have to do something different, but that's the basic equation that you need to keep in mind. What works for the community that you're in? What works for the students that you serve? What works for the culture that you want to create in your classroom? Follow that basic formula, you'll have aces. This is something that most of us completely forget. Due to the current situation, these kids have not had interaction with everybody, not 100%, in some form or fashion. If that is the case, take that into account. Bring it up. Tell them, I know that you need to talk to this person because you haven't seen this person in six months. I get that. But we also got to get this done. So 
work on this, talk, collaborate, look and listen, little variables that you gotta take into account. I feel the need to do some of these classroom management videos. If you guys want me to keep these up, please let me know down in the comments below. Again, let's take care of the homework. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all the various platforms to get the message out there. To me, teachers, students, and, and colleagues that we have, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.